featured by Lucas Reinfurt, where to begin on pattern language entry points. Thank you for the introduction. So, <coughs> Jasmine just uh, gave you a quick overview of all patterns and what they are. So, I will skip that part, but what she didn't explain is what uh, pattern languages are. So, pattern languages um, are a bunch of related patterns that are linked together um, by some relations. For example, <coughs> one pattern is used after another, or one pattern is incompatible with another one. And uh, with pattern languages, we can have a problem. So, for example, we have a practitioner down here. And he has an IoT system with a bunch of problems, and his task is now to improve this IoT system and uh, solve all of these problems. And he has used, with, used patterns before and uh, knows about pattern languages and wants to use them, but he has the problem that he has to find one specific pattern, an entry point into the pattern language with which he has uh, to start his uh, pattern application process. So, Many pattern languages define some entry points. Usually there is one entry point for a state when, when you are on a green field and build a system up from nothing. But in this case, we already have an existing system. Um, sometimes there are other pattern lang uh, languages with entry points depending on your role in a team or on some other preconditions. But in many cases, these entry points don't fit um, your particular situ situation very well, then you are left with the question of what pattern should I start now? You could just do a manual approach, read all the patterns in a pattern language, and then decide for one pattern, but this can take a long time because a pattern language can have hundreds of patterns. And just taking one particular pattern, pattern and just starting may bring some problems with, uh, with it also. So we uh, try to improve this. Um, situation with uh, this general approach, uh, which is made up of three parts. So at first, there is a situation assessment where the practitioner has to assess the um, problems that he has, the requirements that he has, and in which context um, these problems occur. And we use these uh, assessments then in our next step to select a suitable pattern language and find a suitable entry point into this pattern language. And then, in the next step, the practitioner only has to apply the patterns by following the entry point pattern and then the links um, um, to the other patterns. So, how does this work? Um, we do this at the beginning, the um, situation assessment with um, what we call facts. Facts are propositional statements that can be true or false and we can just state about anything. Um, for example, this system has 42 devices, which is true as a fact. Um, the system has good wireless performance, which at the moment is false, it's also a fact, um, or anything else. And there are an endless amount of these facts, but normally uh, we don't want to look at all of these facts. Only a bunch of them are interesting for us in our current situation. So we can limit the amount of facts that we are interested in um, by using this current situation, which is a subset of these facts. And we can further um, add details to these facts in, in, in the situation. For example, we can um, add, um, describe some facts that have a negative impact on our situation. Um, for example, that the wireless performance is at the moment not good, is maybe negative for us. For us. We can also um, describe facts that are unchangeable. For example, the wireless frequency is limited mainly because of some regulatory issues that we cannot influence and for us this might be a fact that we just cannot change. So this gives us um, our current situation and we can read all of this a little bit and then we have two subsets in the situation. On the left are all the problems um, that we want to solve and on the right is the context in which we have to solve these problems. So here we come back to um, the, the pattern terminology. So in an ideal world, we want to end up in a situation where all of these problems are gone and solved and all our requirements are fulfilled. 
but normally this is not how the world works. Um, usually you will be able to solve some of the problems, but there will be some problems remaining because you have to um, make some trade-offs or simply some problems are not solvable. But now the question is how do you get as close as possible to a situation where, where all the problems are solved? And we said earlier we want to use pattern languages for that and this image, the pattern language that is suitable to solve um, your problems is a subset also of your current situation. That you can also solve additional problems that are outside of your current situation, but at least some of these problems are in the pattern language. And you can have several pattern languages that overlap each other a little bit and solve other problems, but you might also have some problems in your current situation for which you don't have a pattern or a pattern language that can help you. But let's suppose pattern language A in this case is enough for us at the moment. So then we have, for example, this negative fact fi down here, for which there now is a pattern in this pattern language to um, solve this problem. And at the beginning, before we apply the pattern, we have this pattern start situation, which consists of the problem, obviously, and then also um, some of the other facts that describe the context in which the problem is solved in this pattern. And now we can apply the solution of the pattern and um, this works like this, we negate the negative, uh, the negative fact and by this the negativity is resolved and this fact is no longer negative and our problem disappears. But in some instances uh, applying such a solution creates other problems. So by applying the solution we maybe end up with a new problem. In this case we are lucky and this problem is uh, we end up in a pattern end situation that looks like this after we apply the pattern solution. In this case we are lucky and the problem is also part of our pattern language. So we can go further to the next pattern that uh, is able to solve this problem <coughs> and apply the solution. In this case, we might not introduce new side effects, but the pattern itself might link uh, to another pattern um, to solve another problem. So we could follow this link, then we could apply this pattern, and so on and so on. So what we see here is a pattern path through the pattern language that we can follow to solve our problems. And at the end of this path, we end up in a situation where, in some cases, all of our problems, but um, maybe not all of our problems are solved. And we want to find now the first pattern in such a pattern path that brings us the closest to the situation where uh, all of the problems are solved. So this brought us to this definition of an entry point. An entry point uh, into a suitable pattern language is, uh, can, yeah, can be uh, a finite set patterns that are the first patterns in a pattern path that leaves the minimal amount of problems after all the patterns have been applied and that contains the least patterns. This last point, um, we use this as a proxy for um, complexity of applying a pattern path. Um, this could be improved in future work. But how this works at the end in our algorithm is that we create all pattern paths that are possible in pattern language and then we calculate how many problems are left after all of these patterns in the pattern path are applied to our current situation. And we also calculate the length of the pattern path. And now finding the entry point, um, we do this by selecting first the paths that leave the least problems after they have been applied, and then further restricting those to the paths that are the shortest just to um, kick some of the longer paths out. And then entry points are the first patterns uh, of these remaining pattern paths. So, in conclusion, finding entry points into a pattern language is <coughs> the map. We um, showed a method where the first step is situation assessment that creates facts, and based on these facts, um, we um, showed an algorithm that can calculate entry points based on the number of problems that are solved and at the Based on the length of the path, which
which at the moment is a proxy for the complexity that can be improved in future work. So thank you. Wait, so you would have to wait, and um, this one does more, this one does less. Uh, 